good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, today, I want to talk about, I guess you'd say an invention or an idea for an invention that I don't really have the resources to put into production uh, and so I'm just going to share it with the world and see what happens. Uh, now this is related to 3D printing technology, uh, which just as a general disclaimer, I am brand new to 3D printing. I just barely got an entry level 3D printer and I'm starting to experiment with it. I'm doing a lot of reading and research on the subject and that was what led me to this idea. Specifically, my idea pertains to uh, filaments for 3D printing. You know, there's different types of polymers that you can get in the form of a spool of filament uh, to print things out of with a 3D printer. Uh, the most common by far seems to be PLA or polylactic acid uh, because it's easy to print, it's, uh, it's safe, non-toxic, biodegradable, etc. And so it makes a great material for printing little uh, toys and figurines and game pieces and, and things like that, which is what a lot of people who get into 3D printing seem to be primarily interested in. In my case, however, I'm more interested in mechanically functional components rather than game pieces. Uh, and so PLA is not really a good fit for my application. Uh, you know, it's not very strong, it's, uh, it has a very low melting point, which helps to make it easy to print, but it also means it's uh, very susceptible to heat. Uh, it's biodegradable, which means it's very susceptible to weathering and, you know, doesn't stand up well to the elements. Um, so I've been looking at other types of filaments. And, you know, you can get filaments and things like polycarbonate and nylon and even glass-filled nylon, um, but I'm not sure if I'd be able to print with those on an entry-level 3D printer. Uh, that would probably require a little bit more advanced setup, although I haven't fully investigated them yet. Uh, however, uh, one type of filament that seems to be gaining a lot of traction or perhaps even rising to preeminence within the 3D community for uh, 3D printing mechanically functional components is glycol modified polyethylene terephthalate, or PETG for short. Um, because while it's not quite as easy to print as PLA, it's still pretty easy to print even on an entry level 3D printer. Uh, and it's considerably stronger than PLA. Uh, it prints at a little bit higher temperature, so it is a little bit more uh, thermally resistant than PLA. Uh, the interlayer bonding strength certainly is a lot better than PLA, so you, know, you have a more uniform, more uh, isentropic uh, you know, structure within the polymer that leads to better mechanical properties. Uh, and so like I say, P, uh, or, uh, PETG really seems to be gaining some popularity, but it's not without its drawbacks. Uh, it is more prone to stringing, because it prints at a higher temperature, there is a little bit more thermal contraction that you have to consider. Um, and even though it is considerably stronger than PLA, it's known for having relatively poor wear resistance. Um, so I got to thinking, well, you know, is there a way that you could improve upon those characteristics while still retaining the desirable properties of PETG. And what I'm wondering is, would it be possible to make a glass-filled PETG filament? You know, a, a PETG matrix impregnated with, you know, either glass powder or uh, very fine, short pieces of glass fiber. Uh, you know, because if you were able to fill the polymer with a, a percentage of glass, you know, the thermal stability, or I should say the uh, thermal contraction of glass over the range of temperatures at which you conduct 3D printing is negligible. So if you could replace 50% of the volume of your uh, PETG with glass, you would basically reduce the thermal contraction of the printed part by 50%. Uh, 
Um, uh, so, in, you know, insert your uh, adding a glass fill to PETG would reduce the thermal contraction. It would almost certainly improve the wear resistance because of the hardness of the glass, so it would further improve the mechanical properties of the, the polymer or the, the composite at that point. Um, it might or might not have any effect on the stringing. You know, I would think that having some glass powder or glass fibers uh, embedded in the polymer uh, would probably make it less stringy because the glass obviously is not going to melt and so you don't have uh, as much material or as much percentage of the material that's going to want to string out. But that one's a little harder to predict. Uh, and finally, you know, an interesting quirk, if you will, of PETG is that it adheres very well to glass. There's a lot of documentation out there uh, telling you not to print PETG directly on a clean glass uh, print bed because if you do, it will bond so tightly to the glass that when you try to get your part off the, the print bed, uh, you'll end up breaking off uh, you know, flakes of glass uh, because the glass will bond uh, more strongly to the PETG than it will to itself. Um, so, but, you know, it seems like the excellent adhesion of PETG to glass would imply that a glass-filled PETG polymer would make a very good composite because they would bond so well to each other. Um, so, that's my idea. Uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments if your company decides to make this stuff or if you introduce it onto the market or, you know, maybe somebody is already selling it and I just haven't been able to find it. I, I did search for it before making this video, but uh, it's possible that I could have uh, missed it even if it is already available. So, um, interested to see where this goes. Till next time, thanks for watching The Idaho Show.